Okay, so this is video two, and we're going to do it on just a basic setup for a ball python. As you can see, it's, um, time is it? It's almost four, and she's sort of up going around. They're nocturnal, so, uh, tomorrow is actually her feeding day, so you can see she's just sort of up looking for food. She's hungry. Is there anything around that I can eat? Um... She won't be, like, she won't bite us. Actually, my husband's going to take her out just so she can get a little bit of exercise, stretch out her so-called sneaky legs. And she won't bite. She's just, there's a difference between hungry and feed mode. Um, so anyway, she is an adult, four feet long. Um, so she is in a, what would be considered if it was a fish tank, a 40-gallon breeder. It's 36 inches long, 18 tall, and 18 deep. Um, and that is totally suitable for her her whole life. Basically what you want to do is have it half as long as the snake is. So she's four feet, half of that would be two. So technically she only needs a two foot long tank, but you know, more room is better. There she is, a big sweetie. Um, her, uh, we're going to be moving her into what the beardy is in eventually when the beardy gets a bigger tank because uh, the guy that we got her from um, he kind of like broke her enclosure a little bit, so we have to use a weight to hold it down. Not exactly the best idea. Um, so she will eventually be moved. Same size, just a high sweet pea. She, likes the she does like the camera. So, um, you don't have to do anything super fancy. Basically, you need a hot side and a cold side, and the hot side it needs to be at 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Cold side at 80, I mean it's okay to be between 78 and 82, and then between 88 and 92. Um, snakes are belly heat animals, so we have an under tank heating pad, sticks to the bottom of the tank, the tank is sitting on some uh, Gatorade lids so that the pad is not directly on the furniture, and you must 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 use a thermostat with your under tank heater because these under tank heaters can go up into the hundreds um, heat wise and it will burn your snake you might think oh mine doesn't dig yeah that's what I said and there you go right down to the glass so you can see what we did this is what we were recommended by some other people um, this black is the under it's under the glass the heat pad and you can see the probe here the square thing is the thermostat probe it is between the glass and the heat pad and it is set for we have it set for 91 and it's right now at 90 and so it monitors you know like when it when it hits 91 it shuts off sometimes it will hit 92 before it starts to cool down But that just ensures that she is not going to get burned because so many snakes get thermal burns when they're not on a regulated heat source um, and snakes are kind of silly in that If you for instance had a hide that on the hot side that they preferred over the hide on the cold side They will stay in that hide because they feel safer in that hide even though they're burning so it's just the safest way to do things. And then what we did to make sure on top of the glass is reaching, sorry, is reaching what it needs to reach is we have a thermometer probe just sitting there suctioned to the glass and it lets us know, right now it's at 88.3 which is fine. Um, usually because her thermostat is only at 91, by the time it gets through the glass it might be at like 86 and I'm hesitant to bump the thermostat up any higher because I don't want anything to malfunction and burn her. So we just get the last couple degrees of heat via this heat lamp and it's still warming her body, like her belly and her sides and the way that a snake would get heat because it heats up the whole, the hide inside. So she's just getting that radiated 90 degree heat. And then on the cold side, we just have, you know, her hut. Um, check it every day to make sure. I don't know. I think she might have peed. I have to clean that. But um, cold side hut. 
it's best to have the exact same hat on both sides because they will choose which hat they like over you know if she needs to cool down because she's too hot but she likes the hot side hot she will stay there vice versa even if she's too cold but she likes the cold side hot she will stay there so it's best to have the exact same hide um, and then all we do is we have a thermometer probe it's just hanging right now but it just sits on the ground on the cold side just so that we can monitor that and um, snakes or at least ball pythons she needs to sit when she's not in shed this little sweet pea needs to be between 50% humidity and 60% so easily achieved uh, spray bottle just missed her tank once a day um, I've actually noticed because winter's coming it's a little bit harder to keep it moist uh, so I just added a little bit of sphagnum moss in here it's wet just keeps the humidity up um, this here is her hygrometer just hangs there measures the humidity right now she's at 58 perfect um, she has a tree ball pythons are largely terrestrial they aren't big tree climbers but they can be found in some low-lying branches occasionally so she's got this tree she actually loves her tree as you can see she was in it um, after she shed she came out and went right to her tree she she really likes it it's kind of cute and it helps her when she's shedding she can rub up against it it helps her get her skin off um, yes thank you I will I forgot about that. I'll get to that. Um, she's got a, you need to have a water bowl. They need access to fresh water at all times. Um, I got a huge water bo uh, bowl because when I first got her, of course, I didn't know everything I should have known. And I had seen pictures of people's snakes. Um, what's it? Not basking. Soaking. Baby. Sorry. <laughs> so I'm not a professional speaker. Um, just soaking. And I just figured, okay, get a big bowl that she can soak in. And then I learned that if your ball python is soaking, there's a problem. Either they have got um, mites and they're trying to drown the mites or they are too hot and they're trying to cool down. So basically, if your ball python is soaking, you need to check. Um, actually, where you would check would be right under, oh sorry sweetie, did I scare you? Right underneath her, her little chin, there's some creases and everything. You would uh, check in there, you'll see little black dots. And also in the water, if you were to take them out, you'd see them floating. If there's no mites, then you need to check and make sure your hot side's not too hot. But anyway, this, um, the large water bowl uh, also is helping to keep the humidity up with the evaporation. I take it out, give it a good scrub, change the water every other day. Um, her bedding, as you can see, it is uh, cypress mulch, just kind of like bark. Uh, we use Zoomed Forest Floor Bedding, 100% natural cypress mulch. In the bag, it's really kind of nice because um, it's already kind of moist, so when you first when you clean them out, you clean them out once a month. You take everything out, scrub it, sanitize it. Um, we just use a... Actually, do you want to get the cleaner? It's in the bathroom. Um, it's from Walmart. My, no, sorry, PetSmart. My husband's going to go grab it. But anyway, um, when you put the new bedding in, uh, it's already kind of moist, so it keeps things really nice and humid for quite a while, and you don't really have to spray. It's perfect. Um, and this is the moss that we use, Zoomed uh, New Zealand Sphagnum Moss, which is also kind of nice because where it says on it somewhere that it is sustainably harvested, sustainably harvested. There we go. The so dog. it's really nice. Yeah, sorry, my dog is crying. She wants in here. Um, so yeah, we just use this cleaner super scrub. Um, organic enzymes like it's it's really good we just give everything a scrub um, I'll do a thing on cleaning her tank at one point too um, so that's basically it um, for this setup we also noticed like some people do not use heat lamps um, 
we do because of the house we're in we need them to bump that little extra bit of heat and what you can use is the lamp dimmers up and down just how you can tweak them to get the right heat that you need um, they're really helpful saves on energy too so basically she when you set up your enclosure, I'm sorry this video is so scattered, um, you need to choose a place in the house that is relatively dark, relatively quiet, um, not a lot of traffic, so, uh, snakes sense a lot of vibrations. So uh, we just have a spare room in our house. Um, this is midday, turn off the light, relatively dark for her, but it still gives enough light that she's going to get a day and night cycle. Um, so yeah, lucky little snake has her own, uh, beach themed room, but, um, silly girl. Um, and at night, which is good because a lot of people say don't use lights at night, it bothers them. Her heat lamps stay on all the time and we use ambient light and ambient heat night black lights. So basically... As you can see, they're very, very dim, and what it's been compared to is if it was nighttime and the full moon was shining out in Africa. I mean, so it does not disturb her at all. I've seen her at, uh, at night when it's her time to be up, just going around doing her snaky thing, and doesn't bother her. So she is, uh, see if I can get that wobble I told you about, too. Doing that a little bit now. You can see a little bit. I mean, she does sometimes do it worse. <laughs> nope. She says, no, thank you. Um, yeah, I did I miss anything? That's her That's her bedding. Um, some people will just put their ball python on newspaper, paper towel. It really doesn't matter. The reason I don't like to do that is because if she poops her peas. She soaked it. You got to take everything out, clean the whole thing. With this stuff, you can just kind of spot clean wherever she goes. Just grab the handful and she's good to go. So, um, some people like to put backgrounds on their tanks. Um, they say it makes their snake feel safer, but snakes, I don't know. They see in like a grayscale, um, heat sensing, like she doesn't really care if there's a background or not. She's totally fine. And this um, is big enough for her whole life. Yeah, that's big enough for her whole life. Um, some people will put just the fake vines and everything. Snakes do appreciate feeling, they like to be kind of crowded out. Um, she like fills those huts, her whole body. She jams herself in there. They like to feel nice and safe and enclosed. Um, and as for her lid, one more thing I'm going to mention is it is mesh to allow airflow. Um, the problem with the mesh as well is that the heat and the humidity will escape. So what we've done is we've just used plastic wrap and we've just taped it onto the top and left some spots for the heat lamps and just for a little bit of airflow, um, which... Is required because you don't want them to smother obviously um, yeah I think that's it for setup I know with a, a baby they will not need such a huge tank and if you do put them in a huge tank like that you need to have it sort of crowded in for them or they feel sort of exposed um, I think that's it just feel free to ask questions and or if there's anything I've missed and you want to ask me. But I think that's basically it. We just try to take her out as often as we can. Let her stretch out her little snaky body. And tomorrow we'll uh, feed her so we can do a feeding video for you. Um, and get that up as soon as possible. But yeah, I mean you can see she was out searching for food in her tank. She was hungry. She doesn't bite us. Because she's not in a feeding mode at the moment. She's just hungry, um, and we will show you the difference. There is a definite, definite difference. Um, so, I think that's it, easy. I think that's it for today. See you in the next one. See you in the next video. Bye.